Welcome back to the second episode and today we're gonna adjust our character's pelvis so that it would lower itself to the lowest step and therefore in the upcoming episode it's gonna allow us to lift the other foot and it's gonna look super cool. So yeah, let's go ahead, let's get started. So in this video we're gonna make sure that our character bends down its body a little bit based on the height of the surface. So the first thing that we want to do is again go back to our control rig and do some logics over here again. So we're gonna add some more controls to our character. So let's scroll down in the rigs hierarchy, right click in a free space, add a new control. And I'm gonna rename this to be the body control. Now similarly, well exactly the same like we did for the root, IK root control, we're gonna move this up to our pelvis bone, we're gonna right click it and set initial transform from the closest bone, like so. So that's for the control number one, now let's right click our body control and let's add another control inside of it, which is going to be our pelvis control and we're gonna leave it be in the position that it is so it should be in the same position as the body control by default. Now the next step is again making sure that our controls are following the bones that they need to be uh, following so from the A route of the first sequence at the very end what we are going to do is we're gonna go ahead and grab our body control, we're gonna set the control and we're gonna make sure that it follows our pelvis bone. So we're gonna look for our pelvis bone, we're gonna get the transform of the bone and provide it inside of the transform like so. Now slight change with this is that we want to make sure that the body control propagates to its children as well. So therefore the pelvis control should be following the body control as well. There we go. So this is all set up and ready to go. Now we need to do some calculations about so how, what is the surface level in the z-axis for our character so that uh, the pelvis knows how, uh, how much it needs to lower itself based on the surface. So from the sequence B route, I'm actually going to do another sequence because we're going to be running the feet for now and then we're going to add the arms as well. So from the A route, what we are going to do is we're going to first grab our foot control. So let's start with the left one. Let's get the foot control like so. Then we're going to split our transform so that we can do a sphere trace. So this is just a trace again, uh, talked about in many other videos before. So if you want to learn more about this, uh, I have a video on my channel about traces in particular. Uh, I don't mention this one, but this works pretty much the same way as the other ones do. Okay, so we need a start and end position. So we're going to grab our foot controls uh, location and we're going to do add. And we are going to open the B route and we're going to add, let's say, like 50 units in the Z axis. And that's going to be our start position. So what that means is it's going to shoot the trace roughly from the knee area. And we want to have it a little bit higher because, like I showed in the example, if our character's foot is inside of the step, we want it, the trace to start a little bit higher so it hits the highest surface. Otherwise, it's going to hit the floor and it's going to try and go through the floor. We don't want it to go through the floor. We want it to align with the uh, step that's a little bit higher. And then for the end position, we want to do a subtract vector. And... From my experiments with this specific uh, skeleton, uh, my best value was 60. If I go anything higher than this, then my feet are getting uh, are able to lift very high and it no longer looks as realistic. Now, once we are at the end of the foot control, so at the end of probably the next video, you can experiment with making this value higher or lower, uh, but that's totally up to you. Okay, so this is for the trace. Now we need to go ahead and store a couple of values in the memory so that we can actually utilize them. So we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a new variable. And I'm going to call this hit foot underscore L. And I'm instantly going to duplicate this variable because we're going to have another one for our right foot as well. Then let's add another variable and let's call this foot Z underscore L, which is going to represent the 
height in the level for the z-axis so where our feet should be standing in the z-axis and this variable type actually needs to be a float and again we're going to duplicate this and have another one for the right foot as well okay that's going to be it for uh, for now later we're going to save even more data but for today uh, let's try to keep this as simple as possible so first since we're working with the left foot let's grab our hit foot l variable and let's set it from the hit result that we received from our trace and then we also want to set the z location for our left foot as well and we can actually get that from the hit location of the trace so we can grab our z value and plug it in here and then we can connect this to the execution route like so okay so that's it for uh, this guy now we need to do the same thing for the other foot as well so let me just do some small readjustments and I'm gonna copy these nodes right here to save me some time and then we're gonna change the control from the left foot to the right foot so it does a trace from the right foot as well and we're gonna set the right foot's variables so the hit foot r and the foot z r as well and then everything else is the same so we have the hit result and the z axis and the execution route and then we can go ahead and plug that into the sequence node like so small bit of rerouting like uh, this should be good okay so we are saving those values inside of the memory now so we're all good with this one now we need to take these values into action and actually start adjusting our characters positioning so the pelvis positioning rather so uh, let's go ahead and create another sequence from the last route which is our c route for the first sequence so we're going to do another sequence over here so there's going to be quite a few sequences by the end of this because we're going to be performing a lot of tasks so the first thing that we want to do is we want to calculate the pelvis z axis so how high or low our uh, pelvis should go so for that we're going to make another variable and we're going to call this pelvis z and our task by the end of the A route is to actually set this value up. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. And how we're going to achieve that is by we're going to grab our feet, foot Z values. So we're going to grab our left foot and we're going to grab our right foot. And between these two, we're going to look for a minimum value. So which one is lower? So which foot is the lowest one? And then we're going to adjust ourselves based on that value. But if we're going to plug this in directly, it's going to be a very snapping motion. It's going to happen instantly and it's not going to look realistic. It might glitch quite a bit visually and it's simply going to look ugly. So what we're going to do before we actually set it up, we're going to do a accumulate lerp float. So therefore now it's going to happen over time and it's going to happen smoothly and it's going to look a lot nicer. So the result can then go inside of the pelvis Z value. So we have found our target, which we have applied for the LERP. Now we also need the initial value. So the current, uh, cur current value of our pelvis Z. So we're going to grab our pelvis Z, the one that we have current, currently like right now, and we're going to plug it into the initial value. Now for the blend, this is the time that it takes for the uh, for the calculation for the animation to happen. So I'm going to set mine to something like five. Uh, the, the bigger you make this, the longer it's going to take. Uh, so again, experiment with these numbers and we're going to be using a delta time for this. So check this to be true. OK, so that's to calculate our pelvis Z. Now we actually need to go ahead and apply these values to our controls. So the first control that we need to apply this to is our pelvis control. So we're going to grab that and we're going to go ahead and set this control. And I'm actually going to disconnect this and apply it over here to the B route. And so uh, let's start off by getting the bone. So first we're going to need our pelvis bone. So we're going to get the transform of this bone. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to inverse this into a negative value because well we want to go down and then from the result we're going to go ahead and get the trans transform direction like so 
and the direction is our z axis so we're going to open up the direction and we're going to give this the pelvis z value variable like so so it knows what is the direction so the direction is down so we're going to reduce uh, the units uh, so our character would be going downwards now let's split the transform of the control and let's provide the result into the translation and also we want to make sure that we propagate this information to all the children so all the other bones would go slightly down as well with the pelvis and also instead of doing this in a global space we want to do this in a local space otherwise um, it, the math is just not going to add up because we're doing some calculations in the local space and uh, yeah so we want to continue with the local space now the next thing we want to apply pretty much the same logic to our uh, to our root bone as well so, so to our ik root rather so we're going to grab our ik root we're going to get the control first and we're going to apply the same logic we did over here so we're going to grab the transform we're going to inverse the transform we're going to do trans transform direction and then for the direction we're going to use the pelvis z value inside of the z axis like so and then instead of setting the transform we actually want to apply an offset so we're going to bring this in and we're going to do add offset to our ik root uh, root control and then we're going to split the transform and provide the location like so okay so that's good and the last step is we need to propagate this to the children as well so the foot would follow uh, along with it okay so that's good and now the last step is actually going ahead and applying the pelvis uh, pelvis locations to the uh, from the control to the bone so instead of using the full IK, before we use the full IK, we actually want to go ahead and grab our pelvis bone and we want to do set, set transform of this bone. So I'm going to plug it in over here, plug it in and over here. And so for this, first we need to propagate all the changes to the children as well. And we want to grab our pelvis control. We want to get the control and provide the transform inside of here and this is what it should look like <laughs> so the character is going to be a bit sideways and I believe that is because our pelvis control has some bad values in it yeah that's right so what I'm going to do is because this is the offset and I didn't change it okay so grab your pelvis control and change the current values to be zero 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 they don't want it to be changed to zero 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 it could be because of this set control okay so grab your set transform control node and change the values to zeros over here there we go so the rotations should be all at zeros and there we go and now we are good to go okay so that's uh, that's pretty much it so let's give it a try so now let's actually apply this control rig to our character so let's locate where is our animation blueprint so I'm gonna select the mesh locate the animation blueprint animation BP and go inside of your animation graph and in between the state machine and the output pose we want to do a control rig we want to plug that right in between and we want to apply the control rig so select your control rig node and change the control rig class to whatever you called your control rig so mine is my rig and you're going to see no differences in this whatsoever that's what it should be like and then let's go ahead and let's test this out if we hit play now so everything is the way it should be everything seems to be how it was before and if we would walk up to the stairs you will see that the character is going to lower itself down to the lowest to the lowest step and i'm noticing one issue with this mannequin is that the the lowest foot you can see it's slightly inside of the ground so we might want to lift it up just a slightly bit so let's go back to our control rig real quick 
And over here where we did the traces from the B route, we have the Z locations of our feet. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm simply going to grab the Z axis and I'm going to do add. And I'm going to add a couple of units. And from my testing, I noticed that three units on this specific uh, rig works the best. Now, if you're using a different character, your values might be slightly different or maybe you don't even need any values whatsoever. But if I add mine to, if I add three units in the Z, you'll see that now I get way better results. So now my feet look like they're flat on the ground as well. There we go. So now you can see he's going to lower himself to the lowest step. And in an upcoming video, we're going to make sure that the other foot gets lifted up based on the highest step. So that's going to be it for today's episode. So if you like this content that I'm putting out, and even if you want to learn more, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming episodes. And I see you in the next one.